Welcome back to H3 Weapon Deep Dive. Today we are taking a look at the M1911A1 Dillinger. If you've ever worn it, a fully automatic 1911, this is it. Comes with stock already glued on there, a compensator also glued on there, and its own big double glued together 1911 magazine. What the hell? It can take all kinds of 1911 magazines. If you've watched, if you watch my left hand, if you've watched previous uh, videos about the 1911s, there's all kinds of magazines that'll fit. This is a 1911 stamped, that'll go in there. We've got a 1911, uh, or excuse me, we have the Delisle Carbine magazine, that'll go in there. Uh, we've got the 1911 magazine, that goes in there, and the 1911, wait, that's the same one. Well, they're labeled differently in the spawner. <laughs> Shit. Let's take a look at the controls on the Dillinger. Magazine goes in there. Go in there. There we go. Back in the slide, chamber around. Good to go. Up on the trackpad is the safety. There it is. Down the trackpad will eject the magazine. Goodbye. It will not lock open on empty. What? Well, it will lock open on empty if you have a magazine in there. Check the magazine. There we go. Has a slide release. If you press to the left and down on the trackpad, it will release the slide. And to the left and up on the trackpad, and you can lock the slide open like so. There it goes. Uh, it's got up on the trackpad for the safety. You got safe and ready to go. The hammer will cock by pressing right and down on the trackpad like so, but does not have a hammer decock by pressing to the right and up. That will not work. So, bummer there. Uh, what else we got? Uh, there's the ejection port right there, 1911 style, of course. There it is. Good to go. See what attachments will fit on the the Dillinger. Well, we've already got a foregrip on it, so that takes up that space, and we've already got a compensator on it, and we can't take either one of these off, so do we have top rails? No. How about bottom? No, no. So, nothing there, and of course you can't put a comp on a comp, and you can't put a suppressor on a comp, can you? Not today. Well, how about, uh, let's go with the wood one, how about a stock? Hey, there we go. So you, you can get a stock, foregrip, and comp on the Dillinger if you want to. Nice. Let's take a look at the iron sights on the Dillinger. Well, the hell's going on here? You got two front sights and one rear sight. Rear sight's not too bad. It's got very dim dots on it, but they are there. And you've got two front sights, one in front of the other. Well, which one are you supposed to use? All right, well, let's line up with the normal existing 1911 sight. Well, it's hard to get a single shot out, but you can see uh, it's pretty much on, right on there. Now let's reset and let's try the other sight, the top sight. See how that goes. Oh, whoa, that's way off. Yeah, we're punching in the uh, four and five ring down at the bottom there. Let me actually bring that in so you can see. So if you use this top sight, you go way down here. So that is a huge liability for this gun. I don't know why that top sight is set up that way. That is terrible. So you're gonna have to go, basically if you can't see the bottom sight very well, and you probably can't, uh, I would go about halfway down that front sight and that'll get you pretty close. What you really wanna do, ah, maybe just a third of the way down. Boy, it is, that is, that is nasty. So the sights on here are a real detriment to this gun. All right, let's do a recoil test. I don't know if you noticed, but it can't really get off single shots with this. I'm trying to do just the lightest, quickest pull, and I get two. Yeah, can't really get single shots on this, so I'm not going to try to do a single test. So we'll do the full auto test um, using it pistol style like this, and then using it, you know, rifle style with two hands on the foregrip like this. There you go. And we'll do it with stock and no stock as usual. Ready? Here we go. All right, we're going to start with the two-hand 
regular pistol style. I'm going to use the Dillinger double mag because why not? It's fun. It's full auto and I don't have to clean up the brass. Here we go. I'm trying to aim with the existing or the old sights, the regular 1911 sights. All right, we got a ceiling shooter. Got a 10 on the first shot. Ever the rest are in the ceiling. So big fat zero so far. All right, let's do it. Instead of pistol style, we're going to do it two-hand rifle style. Now, this is going to pull it really close into our body without a shoulder stock, and it is super wiggly like this, so I'm going to try my best here to get a good first shot off and see where it goes. Holy smokes, that's wiggly, but they all went in the ceiling, so big fat zero. Uh, 45 ACP is a lot to control, full auto. All right, now we got the stock attached. We're going to try it pistol style with the stock attached. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Hey, not bad. Not bad. 5-7. Okay. Not super, not super controllable. Good first shot. Not too bad at all for a 45 on full auto. All right, let's try it two-handed rifle style. That holds it. A little bit away from us nicely. Okay, decent first shot. Yep, and a 7.5. Hey, not too shabby. Again, holding machine pistols, you know, having having this short of a radius between your two controllers makes the sucker really hard to aim, but the recoil on it is not bad at all, full auto. There you have it, the 1911 Dillinger in 45 ACP with the stock and the funk double glued on everything. Till next time, I'm going to see you. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Crazy.